Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios and this week I wanted to talk about objective versus subjective art. There are two different philosophies or approaches to the creative process. Both are very important but they're not also not mutually exclusive to each other the way some people might think. Uh, and I'm going to show you today that knowing both of them and understanding both of them are really the keys of creating great work. Stick around. So whether you're a creator or just an appreciator of the arts, I do find that a lot of people, mostly subconsciously, find themselves in either the subjective camp or the objective camp. Now, for either side, it's important to hold art to a certain level of standard. And when you're holding art to a certain standard to, and again, the creating side or the appreciating side, uh, it's important to not only uh, appreciate the uh, technical side of things, but also leave room for individual tastes in terms of aesthetics. On the objective side, we're looking at things like technical skill levels, uh, use of certain media, and sometimes the avoiding the misuse of certain media, as well as sort of your own personal artistic integrity in terms of, oh, I'm not going to do something about that subject matter, that's a little too far. I'm talking to you, not safe for work artists. On the subjective side of things, you might be looking at it like, well, or is the artist using a certain media to, uh, or style to, to kind of evoke something in me? Does it resonate with me uh, as a person? Is, or is this sort of level of aesthetic something that I like? Um, all of those are definitely more subjective because they can vary from person to person. So that's kind of what we're looking at. But let's actually break down those two sides a little bit more. So the subjective side, let's think about this in terms of three phrases. The first one is, if I like it, then it's art because I say that it's good. Now this is interesting, somewhat problematic, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's like, okay, well I, I as the consumer of this product, in this case art, uh, I'm, I'm a visual consumer of everything. If I'm listening to music, I'm an auditory consumer of that media. Uh, so if I like it, that means it's art, so that means it's good. So all of that is subjectively, subjectively focusing on you and what you feel uh, is art. So it's like, it's art, it's there, it's good, it's, it, everything's on me. The second subjective idea is that art has no rules. And if you're doing something and if, art, if someone is creating and they're doing what they love, then it's art, absolutely. The third concept of this is, well, if it looks good and someone's willing to pay money for it and we can do this whole transaction, then yeah, it's art. It's gonna be, it's, that's fine. It doesn't matter if it's super technically skilled or not. Uh, they're gonna, I, I like it, I wanna pay money for it, it must be good, it must be art. Objectively speaking though, there are standards to art. There have been since there has been art. Uh, most of these fall under the level of the basic elements and principles of design and how much things kind of relate back to being uh, closer to realism. You wanna, it, it's sort of a, a benchmark for all art and all artists as a way to strive towards a goal, strive towards something in that regard. I think th this side of the objective side is, is very much targeted towards being like, okay, I might not be 100% the best artist in the world, but I'm trying because I'm holding myself to this base standard. And that base standard is sort of the foundation for what makes great art. Another objective side to this is uh, there are things that are objectively wrong in terms of creating. Uh, so back in the subjective stuff, we were like, okay, well, art has no, you can do whatever you want. Like, you can do whatever you want, but a lot of times in doing so, you're going to make a mess, and your work is either gonna deteriorate or, or crumble or not hold to its can. Like, you could create the most realistic portrait in the world, but if you did something technically wrong with your materials, then that's a problem and that's gonna cause issues with the art itself. I'm not saying that you di didn't make art because you didn't use the materials correctly, necessarily the case, but again, objectively speaking, there are things that are 100% wrong. Mixing oils and acrylics together when they're wet, it's like, no, that's, that is wrong objectively across the board. Uh, that's not something you can just be like, well, I was trying to do a thing. It's like, no, you did something wrong. And the other objective part of this is that just because it's popular, just because it sells, doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Uh, great example of this, a lot of junk food, actually. Um, so, I, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but like a Twinkie. 
What about the Twinkie? A Twinkie is tasty. Does it mean that it's a, a great epitome? It's one of the greatest foods ever made? No, it's not. It's, it's horribly overfilled with sugar. They're popular, yes. They sell a lot of them. Are they good? Yeah, for a snack, but they're not a high standard. They're not the thing to shoot for. Uh, they're sort of a base level, entry level thing. And just because they sell a lot of them doesn't necessarily make them that good in the long run. So again, both of these ideas, they're very important. The highly subjective side is important. The highly objective side is very important. But that doesn't mean the two are mutually exclusive ideas. I find that the best work in the world is created when you have the perfect marriage between a greatly subjective idea and a one that also is very objective and is still holds to the standards of art. Now this whole idea, objective, subjective, I'm really just talking about this in the abstract sense of the, the, the concept. So I do want to talk a little bit about some historical and sort of maybe what you might call trendy examples, as well as diving into some of my own work. So first, let's think about the work of Picasso, specifically a lot of his uh, portraits of, of sort of the young women in France at the time, and there's pieces over here probably going through uh, the shuffle right now. Uh, now Picasso's work, very great in the grand scheme of art, hold to the subjective standards of this is really cool, this is different, this is the, you know, the onset of the, the, the cubist, cubist movement, uh, doing things that are very different. Uh, Picasso, in a, like, before doing all of the cubist stuff, was also a very good technical artist. Um, I would say that Picasso's work is a great example of how subjective art can overtake the objective side. Uh, but it doesn't completely overtake it. So while it might not be objectively very nice, uh, it, it's, it's very different to what you might consider a traditional series of portraits, uh, but subjectively what it does, what it does to resonate and, and create emotion in the viewer is something that really heightens that. So in that case, the subjective side definitely wins uh, to create a much more dynamic uh, perspective and piece and everything like that. So Picasso's work definitely leans towards the subjective side in that sense. So another famous artist that I'm sure all of you know is Monet, specifically Monet's Water Lilies. Um, I'm pretty sure this piece is sitting in uh, the Pittsburgh Museum, uh, uh, Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh. Uh, I've seen it a few times. I'm pretty sure that's where it is. Um, now, this is a good example of great aesthetics in terms of the subjective side. Uh, Fairly masterful uh, work of, of color. Uh, the Impressionist style is, well, it's the Impressionist style. But on the subjective side of the things, this is where I will say is that my subjective opinion is I don't like Monet. Uh, but I have every right to not like Monet. Uh, I highly appreciate the objective side of it. Techno skill, great, all of that, awesome. I'm not a fan of Impressionist, the Impressionist movement in general. Uh, so I can appreciate the objective side of it, but subjectively, for me, I don't really like this. And as a creator, as a uh, fan of, of fine art in, in the uh, grand scope of art history, I can say that subjectively, for me, this is not super appealing. Um, people, a lot of people have disagreed. But, uh, and again, in this sense, I would say that Monet's technical skill is really good. But my approach, my re the resonance for that and the subjective side, it dips. So we're on the other side of that balance now. Now a more modern uh, painting trend, I would say, would be uh, paint pouring. A lot of people love paint pouring. Uh, a lot of people have done paint pouring. Uh, what I'll say about paint pouring is that it's highly aesthetic, resonates with a lot of people. Technical skill on paint pouring, pretty minimal. Now there are artists that definitely take it a step further, really elevate that and do some really cool stuff with it. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, just any old person randomly pouring colors together and sliding around on their canvas kind of creates a bit of a disconnect. So it's like, yeah, it looks great and yeah, you can do that, but the technical skill is so low in many senses that it completely devalues the work as a whole. And now the complete opposite of paint pouring, I would say, is Photo or hyper-realism. Now, I highly appreciate people that can do this, especially like simple just graphite work. 
that is insanely good. Like, I will never be this good, good. But I will do look at that work as, as much as I can appreciate, as much as I can say this is the heightness, the, 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 the absolute height of objective work, in that it's the height of total skill level. But honestly, I find a lot of this work boring because it's like it's just a just a person just just a for portrait just a like an eye or an ear or just a thing on a table does it look 100 percent realistic absolutely it looks like i just picked that right off up off the page but it doesn't invoke anything besides wow that looks good and then it's like okay i'm gonna leave now because it doesn't that's it i'm i'm out of i'm out of every, like any interest beyond that uh, it doesn't invoke anything besides, that's good, and that's it. So the height of that side, the extreme of this looks amazing, the extreme of technical skill, often you often lose something in that. You lose the ability to say, I'm transported to this world, or this person's face in, in, this, in the color, and in, in, it just rips me emotionally. Those things tend to exist less the more heightened you get to realism. So again, it's finding that balance. And again, a lot of this, a lot of my opinions on this, they're subjective opinions. You guys might have other opinions on that. But again, it's the, do I like it? Does it resonate? Is it technically skilled enough? And you can push those extremes in either direction. And a lot of times when you hit either of the two extremes, you have work that might, it subjectively might sell, might be great, might be like a logo or in, uh, some kind of a design. Might think like, oh, it's the Coca-Cola logo. The Coca-Cola logo is everywhere. It's popular. They sell a lot of money. It's, it's very design heavy. I don't know if you strictly call it art, but very aesthetically pleasing. Do we consider it art, though? Do we consider the fact that it is so subjectively wonderful? Uh, well, by the way, not sponsored. Uh, do you consider it so subjectively wonderful that it outweighs the technical skill? Or again, something like hyperrealism. Is, is it the technical skill so good that it outweighs the lack of subjective resonance? And I think, again, finding the balance is important because the more you push that in, in the two opposite directions, the more you start to have problems and you have work that doesn't really stand the test of time. It's like, well, that was a nice spectacle for a while, but it doesn't really sit with me. So as a creator, as well as somebody who advocates for you guys to create great things yourself, I want to come back to a phrase that I used to say more often, I tend to not say as much anymore, but it's strive for perfection, but don't expect it. Uh, that's pretty huge in terms of learning to draw and paint things more realistically, especially more towards the objective side. Uh, make the best art you can, but don't expect it to be amazing. But I want to tweak that phrase a little bit. I would say that striving for perfection does not mean that in doing so, your push for technical perfection in the most objectively beautiful work you can, allow, don't let that build in your head to where you completely ignore the beauty and aesthetics of what different people like. Because if you do that, if, if your stri striving for per perfection forces you to ignore subjectivity, then you will never create something that will stand the test of time and never create something that will truly be considered great. So I'd like to recognize that this video is probably a little more abstract and philosophical than what you're probably used to f from me, but this is an idea that's been actually sitting on my board for a really long time, and it's something I really wanted to talk about. Uh, probably should expand on this a little bit more and probably a little bit more articulate, articulately so in a future blog post over on my website. Um, but I think it's a good introduction to this idea of <clears throat> how far to the either extreme do you really go? Are you making work just because it looks cool and, and, and I don't care how skilled I am? And in my own work, that's kind of closer to where I think I lean. Uh, I know I'm not the best artist in the world. I know objectively my work suffers in technical skill quite a bit. Um, but people aren't coming after my work because they love how realistic it looks, they're coming after it because they love the color. They love the, the scene that I'm making. And I think as long as I continue to walk that middle ground, the work that I'll create both now and in the future will consider, be considered to be hopefully really great work. 
don't want to brag or anything. I definitely don't consider myself a great artist by any means, but um, finding that middle ground, uh, leaning probably subjective in terms of what I want to do, but always striving for technical perfection in the objective side is going to be the best way to go, at least for me personally, and I think probably for you guys as well. So if you enjoyed this or learned something, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, Check me out in social links in the description box below, as well as uh, including, or not as well as including a, the official community Discord, where you can chat with myself outside of the context of this channel, as well as uh, other artists to get feedback on your work. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I may or may not have already said that. Thanks, guys, for watching. Keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time. Full full disclosure, I'm pretty sure so many people in comments are going to be like, what the f are you talking about?